I am trying to be very clear when I say that I am going to stick strictly to my reading of the Maxine O'Callaghan, Delilah West mystery series, The Private Investigator. I talked about it, talked about my reading of it last week. I made a list of all the books in, within the series plus the short stories, and I'm gonna stick strictly to completing it. Completing it. I decided that, well, for one, I was gonna just interchange, you know, reading one book between another book and throughout the series until I complete it. But I said, you know what? I'm gonna go straight on to the end. I'm gonna start the year off, go straight to the end. So I'm currently, I can't see no hair on my chest. Can you? Uh, I'm currently on the third book set up and I got about two more to go plus the short story collection and I got my tea of course but I started reading this yesterday Thursday and I'm about 50 pages into it and I'm going to I'm get started reading some more of this today as I have my tea here but um I ended up going to the library earlier this week you know how sometimes, you know, bookstores and libraries are just kind of like my safe haven. It's just places where I love to go. I feel the calmness. I just, it's just, it's me being within my element, right? And I checked out this book, although I did need to check out a book. And I even kind of semi sort of promised myself that I wasn't going to buy any books or check out any books as I progressed through working toward reading unread titles off this bookshelf, which I spoke about last week. But then I couldn't help myself. I checked out this book, The Gambles, The Thief's Gamble by Juliet E. McKenna. And um, I got a couple of pages into it, about 20 pages in it. I don't know. It just really pulled me to it. Um, I think what I'm going to do. Well, I, the reason it pulled me to it is because I've been reading uh, Kristen Britton's um, Green Rider series. And I ended up completing that fantasy series or I'm caught up until the next release comes out in September. And so this is kind of, I think that the girl on the front with the horse re really reminded me of the Green Rider series. And that's kind of what made me pick it up. I was just like, I don't know, I kind of want to see where this goes. But um, I think I might just order that in hardback off eBay. I see a really like an $8 copy on eBay because I just feel like that would be a better, much more comfortable read than this reading this thick book in this small mass market. But um. Even though I did start reading some of the, those pages within that book, I said, let me go back to this. I got to say that given that Delilah West debuted before or predates um, Kinsey Milhone, Sarah Poreski's, uh, V.I. Wachowski, even Marsha Muller's um, pri female private investigator, Sharon McComb, I got to say that it is interesting that Maxine O'Callaghan never got till later, till later down the line, you know, Never got the recognition that she deserved as the one of the, the pioneers of creating the female private investigator in um in mystery fiction. Um, like I said, until later on. But you know, as I'm reading this series, you know, last week I read books two and three, and now I'm on four. I kept asking myself, why is it that she was overlooked for so long? You know, I was trying to do, I was thinking to myself, like, what is the compare and contrast between Maxine O'Callaghan's um, Delilah West character? What makes her, Delilah West, not sh such a superstar in the literary world, you know, it's buttoned down to the mystery fiction world, than um, Kinsey Milhomes or Sue Grafton's Kinsey Milhomes? Why did Delilah West didn't take off like Sarah Pereski's V.R. Wacharski? Even Marsha Muller is somewhere underlying beneath those two authors and she was writing her Sharon McCone series way before those two begin their publications of their private investigators and um there's a there's a number of different things that I, I think that I've come up with even as I read the fourth book in, in Delilah West series um number one although I do enjoy these mysteries these private investigator stories featuring Delilah West they're not they're just kind of like they just bear they're just kind of like three star reads. They're they're interesting enough, but not exactly saying enough to me as the reader. And I had and I thought about it, and I said the reason that Kinsey Milhone or Sarah Pereski's Kinsey Milhone stories are like my favorite and has so much resonance with me as a reader as I'm reading those stories and when I'm ending those Kinsey Milhone books and I'm just like oh my god I love this story. 
it's not only that Kenzie Milhone is such an identifiable character with me, I can really identify with her, but Sarah Sue Grafton's stories are really do look into um why do people commit the crimes that they commit to. It's a series that really in a mystery series that really asks the question to the reader, um or give the answer to the reader as to why people do what they do. You know, why do like the grieving widow comes into Kenzie's office to, you know, express her disdain at some of the poor procedurals that the the detectives who found, you know, once she found her husband's murder, I'm making an example, I'm creating this example off the top of my head. Once her husband was murdered, how they didn't exactly solve who was the criminal and that she needs to employ a private investigator to um, seek out the truth. And then of course, Kenzie subsequently goes and interviews a variety of different people, each with a different gleam, you know, glimmer of motivation for having killed this wife's husband. But the stories that Grafton writes, they further deepen the depth of those characters as she Kenzie investigates and uncovers more and more secrets until she finally lands upon the actual individual, the actual culprit. And even then, that resolution in knowing why this character did commit the murder is so gratifying in reading a Kenzie Milholm book. I don't get that same feeling so much when it comes to the Maxine O'Callaghan books. Um, for one thing, I almost want to say that she kind of uses the same kind of setup with characters side characters and I get them confused like book after book there's a there's this one guy then this one guy then this one guy to these two ladies and I don't know it just they're just kind of like pawns honestly there's really very little depth to them and another reason why I think that um in compare and contrast why I think Sarah Pereski really took off is because Although I've always had my complaints about the V.R. Wachowski series written by Sarah Pereski, um, Private Investigator, etc., etc., in every single one, I'm going to give Sarah Pereski this credit. In every single one, every single one of her V.I. Wachowski stories, Sarah Pereski as an author has something to say. I'm giving that 100,010% to Pereski. Every single via, every single one of her books, she has something to say. And what I mean by something to say is she has a great way of looking at the injustices of like, I always look at them, the white collar crime books, and they slowly become a little bit more political. But um, she has, she uses her character, V.I. Warshawski, to seek justice as it concerns like the disenfranchised being uh, uh, manipulated by insurance companies. Um, she looks at, like I say, a lot of social justice issues within her books, especially the later ones. Um, she looks at a lot of history within the books and, you know, past real events and how they have affected people in, you know, the current time, modern times and the crimes that she associates with them. But like I said, she's always had this sort, this very, a lot of her books always has this very convoluted, um, aspect about them but at the end of the day you know Pereski and I say this and I will give her this like I said I will give her this a thousand and ten percent Sarah Pereski always has something to say in her books and there's not one book that she's ever failed having a, a message behind you know the involvement of V.I. Wachowski with these individual cases the Maxine Cal Callaghan series not so much not so much they're rather weak sauce in comparison but they're fun they're still interesting but and then I'm trying to think what is the difference why is it what is the difference why did Marsha Muller's uh Sharon McCone character take off much more than Maxine O'Callaghan's and I think Sharon McCone's character is a really righteous blend of both those elements that I love about Grafton's work as it concerns, you know, personal individuals committing crimes and us examining why. And she also, Marsha Muller, to a very fair degree, but not as in-depth sometimes as Pereski, she does have something to say in each of her individual books. Some of them not so much, but for the majority, there is something there that there's a message there within each of her books. 
And I think one of the things that makes um, Marsha Mueller's character, uh, Sharon McCone, stand out is Marsh Sharon McCone, although extremely popular, she's always kind of written as this outsider. You know, in a room full of blondes, she's the one with the black hair. You know, she's always been, like I said, written as an outsider of sorts, as well as the underdog who had the fortune throughout the, you know, the, the series to have gain her own agency and just start being the boss of her particular um, surroundings. As opposed to earlier within the series when she was when she was working inside of this little closet inside of this insurance agency. So, yeah, those are the things that I think that probably boost those three authors and sort of left Maxine behind a little bit. Another thing that really annoyed me about this series that I've read, like I said, I've read about two books, is that um, to a very minute degree, and it's not as brazen or prominent as I'm hoping that I'm going to express here. But there were occasions where Maxine used her character Delilah to win over or to uh, gather information through seduction. Seduction. That would mean her climbing on the desk at a particular suspect's office and revealing just the touch of her her thigh underneath her skirt that would that would that actually happened um that would be her unbuttoning unbuttoning her blouse one button down to open up so that you know whoever she's trying to coerce and to give her information you know he gazes into her her cleavage and then all of a sudden you know he releases it relinquishes this information that she's looking for i absolutely positively want to vomit Every time that Maxine O'Callaghan does that to her character, I want to vomit. It's so disgusting to me to watch that. Like, I just cannot stand that kind of stuff. That kind of stuff. I can't specifically recall a time when Kenzie, Kenzie ain't never did no, no sugar honey ice tea like that. I cannot recall a time when Kenzie ever did that. Kenzie, for one thing, she always operated from the brain. All the time, from the brain. Um... I don't think there's ever a time when Marsha Mueller's character did ever did that either. When I really think about it, Marsha Mueller's character is, um, to share McCone character was always pretty, pretty rambunctious. If you will, I don't really want to use that term either. I think that's a little, that's not really a great term. I don't want to describe, uh, Sharon McCone as rambunctious. I think that's gross. Actually. I really, I take that back 100%. I just fail to find the right word and I don't want to use spunky either, but, um, maybe forward she's a lot more forward when she needs to get information so she doesn't have to rely on you know lifting her skirt and all this kind of stuff it's essentially these three characters um they operate a lot smarter they use their brain power much more than um maxine o'callaghan's character but like i said it's not that heavy not that prominent but every time that I do notice this, that those occasions when she has to use her phys physical attribute, attributes to win over information from suspects, um, it just, it really, it really cheapens her character every time. And it's, I cannot stand it. I hate when, 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 when people think that that's the way to write a, a female character in a story when there's so much more to these characters there's so much more so many more much more um efficient means to um get these characters to use their minds and their intellect that's what it's about you know the whole let let me lift my skirt a little bit it's just so it's just disturbing to me i kind of want to give it a just a little bit of credit to the time in which this series was written you know we're talking about the um mid 70s to all the way to the late 90s. 1998 was the last Pillar release, I believe, before the short, a few short stories came about. But this was 1991. So kind of, I can kind of get it. I can kind of give it that credit. But at the same time, you know, those other characters, excuse me, characters would just seem like they were just way above those type of actions to get information. Or at least... 
I can't think of a time in which I've ever had to stop and find myself and um, discuss that, 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 that type of behavior from a character. See, and that's the reason why I love female private, private invest, investigative books, why they're my favorite thing to read of all times, is because they are women characters who are operating in this quote unquote man's world, if you will, you know, given some of the, you know, uh, uh Dash of Hamlet's, you know, um, uh, Chandler, you know, they're what I'm saying, those male characters back in the day, if you will. So they have to be, they have to be a lot more crafty, intellectual, and, um, a little bit more exceptional at, at their, I don't want to say bruteness, but at their, whatever, that part, you know, the brain and then moving forward with, you know, the body, let's get this information like <laughs> one way or another, but not that way. I really didn't explain that well. So at the end of the day, I am enjoying these books. They're three stars really. Um, but they, 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 I don't really have any real feelings for Delilah West as of yet. I will say though, that when, what the author did in the previous book, the third book hit and run, was she really um, dug deep in reducing her character Delilah West to almost nothingness. At the beginning of the book, Delilah West was working as a private investigator, not really receiving a lot of, um, my, where's my time? Not really, really receiving a lot of cases to the point where she could pay her bills. And Delilah West ended up losing her apartment and several other things because she chose to pay the rent at her office as opposed to her apartment. So she had to sleep on a sleeping bag within her office. I thought that that was nice. That was a nice touch to do that. But, you know, she had the private investigator, but she was also a waitress to fill in some of the extra money that she needed to keep in operation. That was a nice, that was a nice touch. I really enjoyed that touch. But by the end of the book, um, Maxine O'Callaghan gave her a, a way out just like that, a way out, you know, a rich man came along, offered her a job and boom, just like that. Um, Delilah West was out of trouble, out of financial trouble. It would have been a lot more interesting to have watched her climb her way out of that trouble as opposed to just being offered a job by some dude and she take it and she's in good standing. And that's, I think that that it's, that's examples like that is why I think that she didn't take off as much or she was overshadowed by a lot of, um, by the other, the other characters I mentioned. I think that that's one. It almost had, has had, it almost, Delilah West almost has a taste of the ideal of a female private investigator in terms of like the film fatale sort of, um, under taste that's not really I mean it's interesting at some points but just not I don't know it's too candy you what is that the what's those nurses candy candy woman's candy candy wrappers or whatever <laughs> I don't know I'm in my mind I'm thinking about a nurse somebody stripping out of a nurse's outfit you know that's kind of where it is not that that's Delilah West but that just it puts me in that frame of mind when I'm reading these books but for the most part, I do like them. I mean, they are enjoyable, not super outstanding, but um, for the most part, they're enjoy they're jo enjoyable, and I really am happy that I'm dedicated to finishing this series because once they're done before the end of the month, um, I can move on to something else, and they'll finally be a mystery series by a female contemporary writer and the private investigator that are under my belt, and I can say that I read the four top, um whatever all I just said in this field so that's it that's my Friday reads we're reading set up and I don't know if I said it as, at this point but I did order this in hardback as well as the final two books um I like the hardback versions honestly I like the hardback versions but um we'll see what's happening so far murder has taken place and um that's always something that keeps me reading is, you know, who is the one behind the murders. But I think that, like I said, 
there's another repeat of all the the setup with her pawn characters about to take place very formulaic in some in some ways but that's it i gotta go i'm gonna read bye